All right, today with our speaking and listening, we're going to be working on what is like part two. Our primary focus today is to you to be able to listen and describe and compare characters in a narrative text about light. Before we get started, though, as always, remember, if you're watching the video and a question is asked, you can pause the video to write down your answer or to even rewind and rewatch certain sections if you missed information. Before, now, as we get started, let's ask a couple of introductory questions. Okay, remember, what is light from yesterday's lesson? Next question, what are sources of light? Remember, in yesterday's lesson, we talked about various sources of light, one being the primary source of light is the sun. Other sources of light could be from electricity or even from fire, such as campfires. Okay. Other sources that we listed yesterday, can you think of any others? I can think of some, like lasers. Oh, or light bulbs and flashlights, candles and lanterns, or even bioluminescent organisms such as fireflies, glowworms, and some deep sea animals, and some certain plants and bacteria. Even like glow in the dark sticks, glow sticks, and other toys or stickers. Now, I'm going to ask another question real quick, just kind of a warm up here. But what sense do we use to perceive light? Ah, if you said we use sight, you would be correct. So, again, what is light? Part two. You're going to listen carefully to hear the answer and to hear how light is described using various adjectives and other words. I also need you to listen for how the five senses are used by the characters in the read aloud to perceive the world around them. Today, you're going to be hearing some vocabulary words. Let's see if I've got those. You're going to be hearing illuminates. Illuminates means to provide light or to brighten, make something clearer or easier to see or understand. You will hear about energy. Energy, remember, is a force or physical power. What every living thing needs to exist to be active. You'll hear about light waves. Light waves are the invisible rays that carry energy in straight paths. You'll hear particles. Particles are tiny or very small bits of something. You'll hear rays. Rays are lines of light that travel in a straight path from a bright object. And then you'll hear shadow. That's an area of darkness created when light is blocked by something. Yes, you may know most of these vocabulary words already. You're not expected to know them all. But with repeated exposure over a long period of time, hopefully you'll get better at using these words even in your own writings and your own conversations. So let's get started with today's read aloud. Here's an image of Mr. Audier at Garden the Gate, Mr. Van Lumen at his canvas. Good morning, my friend, said a smiling Mr. Samuel Van Lumen. It is good to see you. I see you're already working, replied Mr. Jack Otteray, as he pushed open the creaky garden gate. What are you painting today? Well, I am painting the roses that have just begun to bloom, replied Samuel. I am taking advantage of the early morning sunlight. As you know, my eyes are not what they used to be, sighed Samuel. Sadly. I can only paint for an hour each day. You will have to speak up, Samuel. I'm a little hard of hearing, you know, said Jack with a laugh. How about we sit for a while under the oak tree, replied Samuel. I have just made some lemonade. 
I am hot standing in the sunlight, and my eyes are tired. So quick question here. What type of text is this so far? If you said it's a narrative, you would be correct. How can you tell that it is a narrative? Narratives, remember, have characters. They also have dialogue. And there's a plot. So far, what have we learned already about Samuel and Jack? So far, we've learned that they are friends. They're older men, and Samuel does not see very well. Jack does not hear very well. Samuel and Jack walked slowly toward the shade of the giant oak and settled themselves into two comfortable garden chairs. Samuel picked up a pitcher of ice-cold lemonade and poured it into two sparkling glasses. Both men were silent for a long while, until at last Samuel spoke. I've been pondering life, said Samuel, speaking loudly so that Jack could hear him. I have such wonderful memories, and you are in many of them. I'm glad to hear that, said Jack. Now that your eyes and my ears are failing, we should strike a deal. I will be your eyes if you will be my ears, Jack exclaimed rather loudly. The two men laughed. At that precise moment, Samuel's dog, Alfie, came to join them. Alfie stretched and yawned and then curled up in the shade between the two friends. Quick question. Did you hear an adjective that has to do with light? If so, what adjective did you hear? If you said sparkling, you've got it. When Jack says he will be Samuel's eyes, he, is he being literal or figurative? Ah, yes, he is being figurative. So what does he mean when he says that? When Jack says he'll be Samuel's eyes, that means he'll describe whatever he sees, since it's harder for his friend to see things now. Tell me, said Jack, what is the painter's most valued tool? Light, shouted Samuel. Let me tell you why light is so extraordinary. Samuel lifted himself out of his garden chair and stood beneath the giant oak. As he stood, he gazed out into his beautiful garden that was bursting with color and scent and began to speak. Our main source of light and heat is the sun, a hot star of glowing gas. Samuel smiled as he went on. Light illuminates objects and makes them visible. Light spreads out in all directions. Because of light, our eyes and our brains are able to form pictures of the world we live in. I have spent my life painting those pictures. Light gives us every sunrise and every sunset. Without light, there is only darkness. Jack stared up into the sky. I've always wondered how exactly light reaches us here on Earth. The sun is more than 92 million miles away. Samuel nodded. It is difficult to comprehend how it takes a mere eight minutes for light from the sun to reach us here on Earth. Light travels in the form of tiny waves called light waves, explained Samuel. These light waves travel in straight paths called rays. Rays of light waves travel at the fastest speed possible in a vacuum, a place that has no tiny particles or bits of matter. Because most of outer space has very few particles, it is a vacuum, 
and light travels there at the remarkable speed of approximately 186,000 miles a second. Jack sat shaking his head and then took a sip of the refreshingly cool lemonade. That is a lot to think about, he admitted. It sure is, agreed Samuel, smiling. Scientists are still studying and learning many new things about light, including that in special situations, light can act like a stream instead of a wave. Jack shook his head. Figuring out how light works must be a complicated, but it is indeed fascinating. Here we have an image, and you can see the rays of light in this image because they are shining on bits of dust and moisture in the air. Have you ever seen rays of the sun like this before? No. Yes. What was the best time to see rays like this? The best time to see rays like this would be either near sunrise or near sunset, or when it's partly cloudy outside. Samuel nodded. Light from the sun reaches Earth because it can pass so quickly through outer space. There's almost nothing to block its path. Once light reaches Earth's atmosphere, it slows down a little bit. Question. Why is there almost nothing to block the path of the light? There's almost nothing to block the path of light because space is considered to be a vacuum or empty of most other objects. The atmosphere is like a blanket of air full of gases and moisture that covers the earth. This blanket of air slows the light down. Look at the lemonade and the oak tree. Look at the shadow that they cast. Then, Samuel continued, the speed of light slows down even more because objects start getting in the way of the light rays, Samuel pointed to the lemonade. For example, rays of light move more slowly when traveling through liquids such as this lemonade. Then, Samuel pointed to the oak tree. Light waves cannot pass through other objects such as this beautiful oak. Because rays of light waves travel in a straight line, they cannot bend around the tree either. Instead, they leave a shadow or shade on the other side of it. Well, I, like Alfie, I'm enjoying sitting in this cool shade where there is clearly less light and heat, pronounced Jack as he sipped his lemonade. At this precise moment, as if he heard his name, Alfie leapt out from under Samuel's chair and jumped high into the air in pursuit of a buzzing bumblebee. Both men stopped talking to watch the dog's frantic attempt to capture the bee, but to no avail. The bee seemed to float away on the warm summer breeze, no doubt in search of a sweetly scented flower to pollinate. Another important thing to remember is that light is fuel for our planet, announced Samuel. Light is energy. Energy from the sun supports all forms of life on this planet. Without light and heat from the sun, the farmer would not have food to harvest. In fact, we could not exist on earth. Question. What do you see in Samuel's garden that needs light to survive? If you see grass, trees, flowers, people, and animals, You'd be on the right track. Hmm. Speaking of food, exclaimed Jack. Yes, indeed, said Samuel. I think I've exhausted both of us, and it is almost time for lunch. What do you say we go into the kitchen and get something to eat? 
I say, that's the best thing I've heard all day, laughed Jack. And I smell something delicious coming from the house. The two men made their way into the coolness of the kitchen and prepared themselves a lunch of homemade zucchini bread and fresh fruits and vegetables gathered from Samuel's garden. They sat at a table next to the kitchen window and talked about old times as they ate their meal. They recalled how they had first become friends in elementary school. They had been in the same third grade class together, and they had been both they had both been keen baseball players. They had gone to high school together and then on to the same college where Samuel had studied art and Jack had studied music. They, even, they had even been soldiers together. Eventually, Samuel and Jack had both married and had children. Their wives became good friends, and their children grew up playing with each other. Sadly, both of their wives had died. Their children were now adults with children of their own. So you can see that Jack and Samuel have many similarities, but they also have a few differences. So quick question. Raise your hand if you, or on the computer if you're listening to the video, pause it to see, are Jack and Samuel more alike or less alike? Ah, they're more alike than most. If you said that, that more alike, pause the video and write down a few ways that they are alike. I want you to remember in this section of the story to listen for adjectives that have to do with light. Before they knew it, several hours had passed and the bright sun had set. Samuel and Jack were now sitting on the porch in the shimmering twilight. Sounds of various night creatures were beginning to echo in the still of the evening. It won't be long before the stars are twinkling in the night sky, and the moon is shining brightly, said Jack. It is almost time for me to go. Samuel gazed silently at the emerging night sky. They sat together, enjoying the cooler evening air. Eventually, Samuel spoke. So question, what adjectives did you hear that have to do with light? Pause the video to answer the question. If you said you heard the word bright, shimmering, twinkling, then you would be right on track isn't it amazing that stars make their own light but the moon does not sunlight bounces off the moon to make it look like it's shining brightly in the night sky mused samuel of course i could sit here all night and talk about why light is so important not only for myself as a painter but for our very existence, he said contemplatively. That's a fact, replied Jack, smiling at his friend. Samuel smiled, too. Jack, how about we go fishing tomorrow morning, asked Samuel. Sounds good to me, said Jack, as he stood up to go. As you know, I am the better fisherman. It will be a miracle, Samuel Van Lumen, if you catch a single fish. We'll see about that, exclaimed Samuel as he watched his best friend walk slowly down the garden path and through the creaky garden gate. Now, those of you watching the video, your teacher may ask you a series of questions that you need to respond to. And remember, if you need to rewind and rewatch part of the video, feel free to. Otherwise, I hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching.